It's Wednesday, July 14th, coming up live on The View. Radio host and author of The Obama Diaries, Laura Ingram is guest co-hosting to weigh in on hot topics. From why she goes after Michelle in her new book, to the bombshell announcement Bristol and Levi are engaged, and why a school wants to start teaching sex ed in kindergarten. Plus, James Brolin's revealing how his new movie that puts a different spin on High School Musical and Glee became a family affair with wife Barbara Streisand. Then, Lindsay's going to jail, Mel's going off the deep end, and LeBron's going to Miami amid an uproar of controversy. So celebrity spin doctor Cindy Berger's doing damage control to see if they can rehab their public images. All that, hot topics and more, coming up live on The View. This morning, as our special guest co-host today is radio host and author of the new book, Obama Diaries, Laura Ingram. Hey. How are you? I'm good. I'm fantastic. It's been a long time. I've I've lost the love from you just for a few years. It's been, but I feel it's coming back right here. I feel it's all back. We haven't seen you for a while. Yeah, definitely. Excellent. First time Joyce talked to me in the last 20 minutes, but <laughs> just teasing. Just true. Teasing. We bonded over those kids. With you. What? You wore red to coordinate. Yeah, we, that yeah, was an accident. Good. Red state America, Joe. I'm glad even you were abandoning the Obamas. Oh, Great. Oh, please. Never. Fantastic. Never. He's, wow. like, he's like my first husband. I'll always love him no matter what he did. <laughs> <laughs> That's disheartening. Well, let's talk about some interesting, disheartening stuff. <laughs> We have to start with a bombshell cover story of Us Weekly magazine. Bristol Palin and Levi Johnston are engaged. Oh, Bristol that's admits, so beautiful. Well, she admits she doesn't have the approval of her parents. Aren't they going to read the magazine? Anyway, it did, <laughs> she did Maybe. warn them that they were uh, breaking the news st to a magazine before uh, they told their folks. I thought Mama Grizzly knew where her children, where her cubs were all the time. <laughs> Must have turned this into an attack on Sarah Palin. This lovely news of the new, uh, new, newly engaged couple and it's Mama Grizzly. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's lovely news because I think it's a little bit disheartening for our word. I think it's challenging. First of all, she is an adult, so her Mama Bear does not have to necessarily know oh. exactly where oh, she is. 19, Number right? two. She, I do think it is disconcerting a bit. You know, we've seen a lot of what Levi's done to get some attention. You wonder how vulnerable someone is when they have the baby and the, the dad comes back and says, I do love you, I miss you. He texts her, I think, which was utterly romantic. I want to be with you. <laughs> and now they're getting back together. So I think there's, there's a little concern there for, you know, Bristol's well-being and the baby. Agent. What's his, yeah, well, what you are know, his it always Don't happens. I always say it happens over Thanksgiving. You know, you're home by yourself at night and you got the, you know, put the baby to sleep and he comes over and everybody kisses the baby and you're looking at each other. Well, at least that's how it happened with me. But you, uh, <laughs> you know, you're looking at each other and, and you're like... you're still single. And yeah, because I realize... I re yeah. But yeah. I am very happy yeah. for... Not to, be, so not to be great. cynical, but isn't it an interesting piece of timing that Sarah Palin is putting out the word she's running for president? Oh, no. You and, are not thinking and, this is political. Oh, come on. You're the one. Your this side is, is the one that constantly thinks everything is political. Oh, my yeah. goodness. I mean, she come probably on. put them in a room together, shacked them up, got her daughter pregnant, oh, all for the purpose of media. No, I mean, listen, on, listen, listen, black helicopters are, are swirling second. above the ABC the studios. Look at the scenario in 2012. How would she run oh if her gosh, daughter got knocked dream. up and the guy didn't she marry did. her? First she did. Right. So now everybody she did is good. Already. It's all about redemption. Joy. She did it already, Joy. Joy, Joy first of she all, first of all, yeah. first of all, what I don't, what I don't get here, okay, is that this is beautiful, beautiful couple on the cover, cover of, of the magazine. We don't know what's going on. We've all, you know, done things that we're probably embarrassed about, but they're together in what do you do? I mean, we I've don't know the truth. Have you read some of the things he said about Sarah? First of all, Did you have him I guess he realized his in-laws are armed. <laughs> First of all, some 
<laughs> Maybe you realize also, it's better to keep your enemies close. I mean, he said a bunch of stuff. It's kind of, it's, uh, it's, 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 we don't have playgirl uh, spreads. Right. Any more playgirl spreads and well, I'm all for it. Let me read the uh, Sarah oh, and Todd yeah. statement. Uh, Bristol is 19 now, a young adult. We obviously want what's best for our children. Bristol believes in redemption and forgiveness <laughs> to a degree Good. most of us struggle to put in practice in our daily lives. So Good she's saying, her. listen, if she can take it on, yeah. go ahead. How about the child? It's you the know? best for the child for the parents to be together. That's the, I mean, that's well, the... Well, we hope that's the best. Yeah, I of mean, that's the best. Well, well, no, it's not, no, you know, no, it's not always the best, the best because, you know, you, you have a lot of parents who are not good to their children. Well, we let's, know let's that. presume so, that they're beginning to put their life together well, and we well, wish them the best. It's a statistic show, but it's really good for the candidate. And remember that Kathy Griffin turned him... Kathy Griffin turned him down first, okay? We turned him down for what? Oh, please. Yeah, they were okay, 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 never okay, mind. I don't even want to look. Okay. Okay. Listen, yesterday, Radar Online released a third recording of Mel Gibson unleashing on his ex-girlfriend. Yes, it's back again. Police are investigating possible domestic violence charges, and articles are pointing out that years ago he admitted he was bipolar and manic depressive. So? There have been... <laughs> Points to the question, how you know, in terms of culpability, what are you responsible for if indeed you do have an illness like that? So I think you know people are going to say, well, or do we believe this is true? Is there documentation of it being true? Was mm -hmm. he not taking the proper medication or herbs, whatever you need to be doing? Herbs. And then is he responsible? <laughs> Cures manic depression. Do people go easier <laughs> on you? I mean, if, it, if it's proven that you're, you know, manic depressive or you're bipolar, no. do, do you get well, it easier? No, do, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't know. I, I'm a victim. I'm a victim of, right. of X, Y, or Z. I mean, uh, you know, I know Mel Gibson a little. He said this. I know Mel Gibson a little bit, and well, and, like and I think this is oh. this is one of the saddest sagas. And one yeah. reason I think it's sad, which isn't you know talked about all that much. He left his wife, who he had, what, seven kids with? Eight children with? We seven seven children yesterday. with? Yeah. And not a lot of good things come of your leaving your wife, who you've been with for 30 years, and you've had seven children with, okay? He's made that decision, and the narcissism of the whole celebrity culture has enveloped him. And well, that's sadly, I, that's that, where he is. He's an enormously of, talented man. Yeah. I was saying that yesterday. I don't know, and, and, because we'd never heard about any of this stuff going on when he was with Robin and the yeah, seven kids. She hasn't Sometimes said that. it's the stability right? of, of marriage that keeps you, you know, centered and grounded. I love when he says, I own you. It sounds like my contract with ABC, you know? <laughs> <laughs> We have Sydney Berger, who's coming on later in the show, actually, who'll right. be here to She's talk, nice. about, talk about all what these sort of things he folks. should do. Yeah. But we want to know. We, we, but we, we, you know, a lot of people were fans of Mel Gibson, yeah. and I think a lot of people are searching for answers of what well, could have happened. I think she's releasing him. these tapes. Why is she doing that? She was fearful, I well, think. Well, she, she has no power. Why she has the money. Why is she releasing the tapes? She did But she says she didn't release these tapes. She said she didn't. That's what Whoopi said. Say that again. Go to the police. But she said, Asana said she did did not release the tapes. Oh, okay. I don't know how did, did, did you ever see the movie Chinatown at one point? Yes. She says, he says, go to the police. She says, he owns the police. Come well, on. I don't I'm sorry. Mel, Mel doesn't own the police, the police he's in a LA. powerful, no, no, powerful no, no. guy. No, no. You, you know what? He, he's, he ever he's, did any of this stuff, is, then she has every but, right to do whatever she wants he, with this tape. I, Go ahead, baby. Well, I just, I just think, look, this is an incredibly sad saga. This man is amazingly talented. I don't care what anyone thinks about his politics. He's an amazing talent. And like so many people in the narcissism-driven uh, celebrity culture that we all have become uh, accustomed to, He's gotten sucked into his own press coverage, his own yeah. positive yeah. press coverage, and he doesn't have a good sense of himself. That's what's really sad here. Did you well, read I, what he said? It's it's horrible it's stuff. It's, it's, it's beyond. It is. Really it is. Take a minute here. I need to take a minute here, a minute minute here because, minute minute minute. because there has been a, a lot of hassle and hazarai <laughs> in the media recently about moi. <laughs> because <laughs> yes, a hazarai. Uh, because I had the audacity to say that I had some personal time with Mel that goes over years and years and said that I did not think of him as a racist. People lost their minds, said, oh, you, you are defending him. I do believe, had you actually watched the show, all of you nice bloggers out there and all the folks that sit around at home and try to figure out stuff to do, if you had actually watched the show, you would have heard us say and you would have heard me specifically say, I don't condone this. 
I don't think this is right. I don't think this is smart. But here's the piece of information that I have. My experience tells me that this is not a racist. Now, being a black woman, you'd think you would give me a little bit of, of you know, <laughs> leeway to have some feel if I was around a racist. <laughs> but okay, I understand. I understand you don't get it. I understand that. But then people called my office, really? called my office, and went off on the young lady that works there. You're gonna call because you think I'm doing something wrong? And you do the same thing to this young lady that you don't even know that Mel Gibson supposedly did? Who are you? You can kiss my behind, okay? <laughs> the last thing, the last thing, don't be a coward. If you go, I can sit up here with my say, this is what I believe. And you don't have to like it. But I do it, and you see me face to face. And you call my office, you cowardly piece of dog mess. <laughs> Listen, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. And the last thing I want to say, because I want to confess to you guys, uh -uh. Uh -uh. is that I myself am a racist. <laughs> yes, I mean, you're laughing, but here's what happens. If you cut me off while I'm driving, and I happen to look over, Whatever I see, that's what you are, <laughs> okay? You are a black or you're a white or you're a female. You are everything in the book, in, in my book. And I realize, given the criteria people are using for racists, that I'm a racist. Now, if any of you can actually look in your mirror and say that you've never done that, then you get the right to cast the first stone. We'll be right back with more Hot Topics. I had an awesome, awesome time on The View. And other than the fact my guitar was completely out of tune, in true Brett Michaels style, it was a great interview and an awesome time. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Over the rant, I loved it. Okay, I loved it. <laughs> Thank you. Don't get whoopy. You have a new book. No, I just, I. You can get me, man, Don't but you can't book, take it out on somebody right. else. Absolutely. You know, it's wrong. But listen, you have a new book called The Obama Diaries. Tell everybody what it is. Yeah, it's a decoding device mm -hmm. for the Obama administration. Because look, the Obamas uh, had an amazing rollout, an incredibly historic election, mm -hmm. beautiful family, lovely mm -hmm. girls, mm -hmm. intact family, a great, a great symbol really for the country mm -hmm. in many ways. And but what's happened over the last 19 months is I think people have started to say, okay, we like Bo the dog, we like the garden, we like the, 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 the family, we like the swing set, we like the romantic dinners. But why do we have 10% unemployment? And why is the, uh, the country seeming to lose influence around the world? And why do so many of us feel so anxious? So I decided to take the historical narrative of just the last 19 months or so mm -hmm. and put them together with these diaries that I was just given. And Whoopi, I know you're, you're a big you're queen of satire. I found these diaries on the roof of my car in Washington, D.C. at the Watergate garage. <laughs> I just started reading these things. At the Watergate garage? Watergate complex, wow. the garage. I was getting a, pa a petty right. manny. You know, right. you have to do the maintenance. So I, I started looking through these diaries. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Michelle Obama describing the vegetable garden as her big political rollout. In fact, she says she's going to be kind of a toned and tall Mother Teresa with a rake. She considers herself to be now a fitness and health expert, and she's going to take this thing all the way, perhaps, to higher political office. Ah. So these diaries kind of lay it out. We have nicknames for each other. We have Barack Obama predicting, I kid you not, that they're going to take both seats in the House and the Senate in November. Okay, the audacity of arrogance, it's all there. Mm. But uh, they're very funny. The, the, <laughs> Biden's hilarious. Right. Mother Robinson is hilarious. And Michelle, well, she's just... Uh, She's just Michelle, so well, it's pretty, pretty, it, pretty well, arrogant. Is it, is it, is it, is she different really than any other of the first ladies? Because Laura it's Bush had education and literacy in right. women's health. Hillary Clinton had health care. Uh, Barbara Bush had universal liter literacy. Nancy Reagan had recreational drug just say no campaign. I don't think that we, I mean, did we obsess over like, the fitness, what they did for fitness or when the strolls kid, yeah, and the did. strolls on the White House well, I think lawn. everybody did. It's, it's a, a different era we're in Michelle's now. Michelle's arms have become the subject she of Endless don't, media don't profiles. Be jealous. Her arms. Hey, Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama. Ugly color green. But I think 
we, oh, yeah. every I'm, president's I'm, I'm every president's wife, we got obsessed with something about them. I remember being oh, yeah. being little and and uh, ridiculing them like no, Nancy and Reagan Michelle and the astrologist put out there about our arms. And I think you know when you say stuff about the garden, I think you know every president's wife has taken out a cause. And maybe did you think that she's saying why is there's she a, fit, why is no, she a fitness expert? Think that maybe I, I, because she is a fitness expert. Also, she's always gotten up and she's exercised. So what? She's so is a fitness. lot of the country. I don't think anyone's you know what? No, a lot of the country. What is the point of this? <laughs> okay, why did she? No, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, you're, you're characterizing my book, but you, you, you clearly haven't read it, okay? No, no, no here, I did read here, it. Here, here's what we know. She goes on Larry King Live, and she yeah. said that she is, uh, this was the first White House vegetable garden. Abigail Adams, okay? Andrew Jackson had a garden. Hillary Clinton had a garden on the roof, okay? The idea that it's the first garden, it's, it's, it's just always the razzle-dazzle meant to <laughs> overwhelm the narrative of what's happening but, to America. Well, don't you know, you know, it's ridiculous. Don't you find, ridiculous. find that this is a little bit distracting from even the bigger issue here? I mean, look, I I'm glad Michelle is doing something to help kids with, he with why fitness. Is she doing I'm it? not. I, I don't care, care, to be perfectly honest. Might just care. I don't care you know, why Michelle is helping kids. She's a policy she advocate. Is. I don't care what, what she's Health doing. She's helping kids. Yeah. We, should, we should be foc focusing on what her husband's not doing, what, not what Michelle but why is do you, doing. Uh, bingo, bingo. You just hit the nail on the head. No, 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 no. The garden is the ultimate razzle-dazzle because we're talking about the garden. Yes, health care. No, we're uh, talking about uh, your book. Economy, yeah, we're talking <laughs> about economy, John. You're talking about two pages. <laughs> two pages, Whoopi. Well, but that's what but, I'm saying. But but I guess what you guys Elizabeth is saying. Garden. It's, it's, it's an example but of you know, diversion, Laura, the, the other, theater of diversion. Another Laura, the Bush Laura. Yes. She didn't blink for eight years. Literally did not blink. We never saw her blink. <laughs> she barely spoke. That's nasty. She, it's a fact. It's nasty. She, she never fact. said I a thing. I saw so her. Was, I know she know right about here's, about. here's what I want. But now she you the well, I have, when I she makes the comment about well, Laura not doing anything, and then you go, that's nasty. I'd go, then that's not nasty what no, you're saying about Michelle. These are diaries. I, I am not authenticating these diaries or not. The White House is going to have to answer whether these are oh, real. Oh, you make okay? them up. Everybody I'm knows it. So, so they're going to they're gonna have, to, they're gonna have to answer. All I know is nobody elected Michelle Obama exactly. to anything. No so, one elected so, her to so anything. Wrong She's her not to a deity. A no, no, nobody elected no. Nancy Reagan She's and she went did, after did drug Nancy, users. Did, did Come Nancy, on. Did Nancy you Reagan take a, take a a forward policy position during one of the most contentious political debates you only in our don't country? Like it when it's a Democrat. Yeah. Democrat. I have I have something to announce. <laughs> is about Biden and you guys are focusing on Michelle and that's fine but I have an important announcement to make and this is uh, breaking news for all, all of you here in the view audience yeah. this book is explosive it's flying off the shelves but this fall I am rolling out <laughs> the Behar Diaries oh no wait wait a second and let me just say Please I'm just don't tell Laura I don't want the, anybody to think you know me here's the first uh, here's the first line A this, sequel this, there's one thing. The first time Here's I met Star that's Jones, actually she going to happen like, oh, right now. Go. <laughs> We're going to go and come right back with even oh, more God. hot topics. Because we can. <laughs> overwhelmingly voted to prohibit women from wearing burqas. Now, supporters of the ban claim the face covering veils aren't consistent with French values of female equality, yeah. which I find is interesting. But you also feel that that's something that should be, be done here, but for different reasons. Well, I think that, look, if, if people want to cover part of their head for religious reasons, nuns do that in full habit. Remember, Morphe, yeah. I'm talking Hello. to you, yeah. Sister yeah. Act. Yeah. And uh, so you, 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 you can do that. But to, to cover your whole face, we live in a culture here where facial recognition and, and seeing each other's eyes, it's important to our, mm -hmm. to our way of life. Mm -hmm. Also, for national security reasons, security reasons. Mm -hmm. Every time we go to a public place, we're photographed dozens and dozens right. of times. We need to see who's going in mm -hmm. to public places and why. But and they're saying this is for the purpose of assimilation. They're saying it's for the yeah. purpose of assimilation. So if it is for the purpose of security, I think they should be clear about why they're doing no, it. No, and I if was we, asking Laura right. why she felt yeah, like I think that. it's yeah. two reasons. Possibly. Security sure. and, and the, our, our country. I mean, right. we, we exist but as a country. Because we're talking about. 
I know, but I'm, I'm talking about why it hasn't happened here yet. I mean, what, this, I this controversy here. This cr controversy hasn't gotten here because most American Muslims do assimilate into our society, and we don't have these types of tensions. They could happen here. They haven't yet, thank goodness. You know what? But I don't blame the French you for know doing what, what they're I think doing. It's, I think it's so wrong to do that to people. They, pe pe people re really want their religious freedom, whether they're Muslim, Jewish, or Christian, and they should be allowed to How wear a, a TSA? cross and, and a star and a burqa if they but have to. That's different from and covering your whole face. Why? Joy. Why? why? That's what they do. How, 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 how does, why does grandma listen, have to listen. undo her walker at the, at the TSA line at the airport? Well, but, she's but, a security but, but, risk. but someone could go through, yeah, someone could go through fully covered up with just slits well, for their eyes. I'm not sure that they should. subjugation. You're for women. I'm not sure that they should go through security that way. They're talking about people Public just places. walking around. Yes, yes. Well, Public places. We're going know, to they're, airports. They're saying yeah. also, but, but they're also saying that it's against women, that it subjugates women. It is women. subjugating right. to okay, women. Okay, then all religions subjugate women. No. Oh, that's, yes, a, that's, a, that's a crock. Not that is ridiculous. Not Are you religions. kidding me? L no, lump no, no, every religion together and every facet of every religion together. I'm every sorry. Religion. I wear a cross. This does not subjugate. Okay, this no, is liberating. But there are not, no, pri no women priests are allowed in the priesthood, okay. for example. I knew this would become wrong. an indictment of the Catholic no, Church. No, Why are you clapping? Wait a second. Let me in a Jewish synagogue, okay. the women in the Orthodox have to sit upstairs. They're not allowed on the floor with the men. And should have to wear a shawl to cover their heads. Okay, so, but, I mean, but you don't have to be Catholic. So you don't have to be Catholic. You have to like that. should ban all religious no, symbols. We're talking about an entire no. face, so you can see nothing except the slit of someone's and the eye. It would help some people. Which is... <laughs> <laughs> I just think that's a Pro-woman. I mean, that's not pro-woman. Well, you know, it's, it's, we're going to go on to something she else. She's just disagreeing this is going for the sake of disagreeing. No, no, actually, actually feels this way. Oh, I she believe. actually feels this way. Yeah. But now, the school board in Helena, Montana, is voting on a new curriculum, sorry, <laughs> that would begin teaching sex education in kindergarten. Yeah. Right. And yeah. the Karma Sutra is going to be followed in the third grade. Some parents are outraged saying kids that young aren't emotionally prepared. Can I say what, because this is what it is. It says, uh, when they're in kindergarten, they're going to learn proper terms such as nipple, breast, penis, scrotum, and uterus. Once they're promoted to first grade, it's they're going to learn... Those are good Scrabble words, by the way. Once they are promoted to first grade, they're going to learn that sexual relations could happen between two men or two women. By the time they're 10 years old, instruction will include the various ways people can have intercourse, be it vaginally, orally, Anally. or through Lovely. anal penetration. So can what? I ask a question? Let me ask a question. Let's start back at the kindergarten age. Mm -hmm. If you grow up and your mother calls your penis a wee-wee... Yes, which I do. Okay. My son is five years Does old. Does he know the correct term? At this, at this Does age, he know that I he feel... Has a penis? Sure at, I feel as him? his mother, yeah. he doesn't need yeah, to be saying you. the word penis as his mom. Now, if you want to tell but, Joshua so to say penis, he, that's you. If he... If he, he says, says my wee-wee wee wee hurts, you prefer him to say my wee-wee hurts. Yeah, what, what are these? It's a parent choice. I'm just asking yeah. him. Listen, my kid knew the names of the words. She didn't go around going pee-pee, 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 wee-wee, wee-wee. She didn't do point. that. It's but not here's a matter of question. knowing it. It's when the yeah. parents you, are ready for their child to know it. But why wouldn't you want your child to know what their body is appropriate? Well, that's what I'm asking. Not all children are at Okay. I just said when she was four years old, we were on the beach, and we had a picture of a lion mounting a lioness. And she looked at it and she said, what are they doing? And I said, they're making a baby, a cub. And she said, when you and daddy do it, do you go, rah, <laughs> And on that note, we'll be right back with James Brawler. <laughs> One of Hollywood's most dashing leading men for decades, and now he's behind the scenes producing a new movie called Standing Ovation. Please welcome the very handsome James Brolin. I love that line. <laughs> you don't mind if I use it all twice. The time. You can have it all the time, man. <laughs> so yeah. before we get into the um, nitty gritty of the interview, okay. Before we do that, oh, okay. uh, I heard you talking about gardens. We we eat, eat almost everything out of what we grow in our in our garden. You and Babs? Yeah. Really? Bab, who calls her Babs? <laughs> At 14 years, <laughs> every, you know, it's like Your somebody says Barbara James, and I never turn around. I think they're asking for the butler or the. I don't, we don't have a butler, but I always think. 
They're calling That's nice, some though. It. Organic and James. stuff. James. Well, it looks good in print. It does. Jimmy, nice Jim. Name. <laughs> you, come, you have a lot of famous people in your family. Your son, Josh. Did you teach him sex ed when he was six years old? Mm. <laughs> How old was he? No, he had, well, there he is in the yeah, picture. There he is. Um, yeah, there he is. Yeah. He just arrived in the city this morning, and he taught me a little bit about it, because uh, yeah. at 10, 11, yeah, he was pretty hip about what was going on. Okay. So, uh, And uh, I may ask him something this afternoon if I see him. <laughs> Give me some questions. Hey, I wonder, you have a birthday coming up. Uh-oh. So, oh, yeah. are you happy about it, or do you hate your I, birthday or love birthdays or Birthdays are great. You know, they just, they're like, and if you don't have a calendar, they remind you that a year's gone by, yeah, you know? Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, that's a but, but you're still every, alive. Yeah, that's true. It's better than not having them. Yeah. I yeah. usually, I, hey. Right? <laughs> uh, I usually am working in the summer on a production or something, mm -hmm. and nobody knows it's my birthday. And the greatest birthday is when nobody mentions it all day long. And I you're fine with that. What yeah. is that? That. Yeah, isn't oh, that weird? That's interesting because people I are either way about it. I feel like it's an obligation, it. you know. Well, it means that nobody's mm -hmm. judging I love to you give, by your But age. I feel like it's an obligation when oh. people go, "Well, I better get him something. I hope he likes it." You know, yeah. chances are. You just don't want anybody if to If you ever obligated. sing in the shower, does Barbara ever check your tone? I mean, the pitch, whether you get the right no, pitch. I, do. She I ever... have a tendency to sing in the shower and in the car where you can get the windshield <laughs> bouncing, yeah, so you can get, you can find that note, that true note. Yeah. So. I'm gonna ask you about this movie. Oh, were you? Well, I, you were the, you were the ex she never. Never. She never sings in the show. Oh. You know when she sings is on the way to a recording session. So I, have a, I got 45 minutes to learn this album. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Grammar. Yeah. Hey, and she has a disc she puts in, yeah. and they go, ah, oh, you know, that, open her all that, that. Isn't that funny? I like all that inside well, information. Well, she's just a natural, as she's we know, natural. huh? She's yeah, yeah. Joy mentioned uh, standing ovation in, in your intro, and you were the executive producer of this, and I yes. think it's so great. I cannot wait to watch this with my daughter. It's essentially oh. about kids competing, right, for a music Absolutely. video. Absolutely. Yeah, how old's your daughter? She's five. Is that, oh, she's yeah? just going to Oh, die. she is. She loves music. She's, she's going to watch it three it. times, and the third time, she'll know all the words to the song. Yeah. Yeah, and we have one belly dancer in there. That oh. These little kids are all trying to belly dance right afterwards. <laughs> we <laughs> actually so have cute. a clip but that I want everyone to see. and kids love this movie. Yeah, they're going to. You're going to see why. Look it's at so this. easy to sell something when you believe. Usually I can. I'm one in a million, and I know you feel it. The confidence and attitude. Baby, what you got? I know that you think that you're so hot. Boy, I'm going to give you just one shot. Baby, going to put you on the spot. All I want to see just what you got. got You know what I love? It's adorable. The kids look their actual age. So, is it? How is it different from, say, High School Musical and Glee? Because that, that sort of vibe is really what's well, going on right uh, now. Uh, Diane Kerman, the writer, director, Stuart Raphael's wife. <laughs> who is from the Cape May, Philadelphia area. And, you know, there's a lot of music associated yeah. with Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. Lounge singers and, and kids that want to be. And, and there's 270,000 <coughs> singing and dancing schools in the five-state area. Oh, my gosh. 940,000 in America. So you know the interest in that. We're going to create some new business for them now, too. And, you know, when I was a kid, uh, you know, variety shows were the big thing, and then they right. disappeared. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. through all these dance competitions, it's all coming back now. And yeah. especially it's now, now back in the focus. Oh, man, yeah. you know. So anyway, High School Musical came out, and Diane realized that no high school kids went to see High School Musical. They were all tweens and, and younger. Yeah. And I know, you know, five-year-olds that, you know, have all three. I got all three high school. Yeah. So anyway, we said, let's make a real Chicago-like dance film yeah. for kids from 5 right. to 14. It's adorable. Yeah. And they are actually five, 5 to 14, which is exactly. so cool. I love that. Exactly. I and wanna... there's 20 dance numbers in this. Oh, this wow. isn't just... Uh, and that one is more rap with a beat. Is it all right. hip-hop? No, it's all Not different stuff. All. Different it's no, oh, it's no. Great. Jazz like dancing no, and, and Vegas dancing. dancing and... Fun. Hey, yeah. there's one other clip that I want to show everyone okay. because you've been in the business 40 years and you got your big <laughs> big break on Marcus Welby, MD. Yeah. And we have a clip oh, yeah. from 1969, Woo. The Pilot. Yeah. Check this one out. You sure you don't want one? Be good mm -hmm. for you. <laughs> no, thanks. Maybe later. I see Mrs. Foster was in. Margaret offered diet again? No, Margaret lost 16 pounds. Mrs. Foster wanted some of those pills to send to her overweight sister in St. Louis. You didn't. Still, she might send her sister some of Margaret's. 
No. I told her they caused some people to lose weight and others to grow hair on their faces, and only a complete examination. Say no more. You want to be a neurologist? You better believe it. That was a nice scene. We, we argued uh, through the first six shows, and they said, we don't want any more arguing. You're the nicest people in the world after that. And I, I thought it lost a lot, because we by number six, we were number one television <laughs> right. show and held it for at least a year and a half, you know? Well, but I, I, uh, I thought they were making a mistake, because conflict is, 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 is the basis for good, good film. And uh, I, I, uh, I won the Emmy for that show. Good for you. And I, yeah. I, I, I so remember that. We want to thank James Merlin. Standing Ovation will be in theaters this Friday, and yep. everybody in the audience is going home with a copy of the soundtrack. We're going to be right back. Oh, I cannot man. wait to see this. for a breakdown and LeBron's headed to Miami amid a lot of controversy. So here to tell you how they can all do some image damage control is chairman and CEO of the most powerful entertainment PR firm, PMK BNC, whose clients include Mariah Carey, Jessica Simpson, and Barbara Walters. Please welcome Cindy Berger. Hey, Cindy. All right, girl. Hi, girl. We have got to jump right in this. You know, Go. Mel Gibson has been in the news lately for some crazy rants and raves, and uh, we, it's just never ending. So if any of you haven't heard any of the uh, tapes, we're going to uh, hear a little bit of a clip. Okay. You come out in public and it's a embarrassment to me. You look like a bitch on heat. And if you get raped by a pack of it'll be your fault. All right? I'm threatening you. I'll put you in a rose garden, you you understand that? Because I'm capable of it. I don't have anything because I've given you my life three years now. I gave you everything. Don't you dare f complain to me. <sighs> I hear you. You don't f count. You're a f using whore. Okay, now, there was even a tape, a, a new tape released this mm -hmm, morning. So, right. uh, amidst all of this, what are your thoughts? It's never ending. What are your thoughts about Mel Gibson? Uh, it's very sad, but I don't think they've been authenticated yet. So, let's just be clear okay. about that. On that note, Alleged. not authenticate, oh, authentication. Yes, thank you. He has not admitted it. It is him. We have not been able to prove that it actually is him. Right. Would you, if you were representing him, would you say, come out and say this is you, if indeed it was? Or would you have him no. just zip it until no, somebody... zip it. He's got to, he's got to stay <coughs> quiet. He's got to get um, uh, some really intense help. Uh, if he's bipolar, if he's had um, problems in the past with alcoholism, which he has, um, the first step is uh, he has to get medical help right away because clearly he's on the precipice of something bad, if in fact those are uh, uh, his words. Does he do that soul-searching publicly? Is that a no, public no, thing? No, 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 no. I think he has to get Any out statement? of the nucleus. No statement. No, no statement. No statement. No, no, no statement. And, and, and a very good lawyer. Cindy, a very good lawyer. William Morris, they, they just dropped him. Yes. Um, do you think that anybody will work with Mel Gibson again? Will he be able to get representation? Any you know, stars? I don't, think, I, don't, I don't think, well, given his history, first of all, I don't think he um, needs to be represented uh, right mm -hmm. now. He's financed, produced, and mm -hmm. uh, actually distributed his films on his own of late. Uh, Passion of the Christ made $614 million worldwide, <laughs> distributed by him. Um, and his latest movie, Edge of Darkness, made $40 million. Mm -hmm. So clearly, um, the public isn't seeing his films. And when you're an actor, um, that's part of the business. Uh, uh, everyone looks at the box office. And mm -hmm. if the box office isn't there, you have a real problem. Do you think he can come back from this, though? I mean, do you think, given if he follows all those steps, is there a shot at redemption here again? <laughs> You know, I, I mean, short of murder, which thank God he didn't commit. Not yet. Um, right. Well, well he, it, you know, it, it, I, if it's I, him, so he's that, threatening to if, put her in a rose garden. Right. Correct. Right. Well, that's why if I said him. that's why if if it's him and not yet, I mean, he needs uh, uh, serious help and he yeah. needs to go away for a long well, Chris time. Chris Brown smashed Rihanna in the face and he's out there performing in Europe no, and no, doing no, no, concerts. No, no. Chris right? Brown had to do a lot of stuff before he got to perform. Yeah, he had to do redemption. Had... Redemption's right. happening, right? So, so I'm just saying anything's possible. It is a long road. Even for Chris. Even for okay, so let's, let's keep on. Let's go, keep on. Go, we've got a lot of go. stuff. 
Lay so let's it. go to the next celebrity, which is Lindsay Lohan. Okay. And she's been sentenced to 90 days in jail. She's right. going to begin her sentence next week. Right. Uh, what do you think about Lindsay Lohan? Thank God for that judge. I think it's the best thing yeah. that could have happened to her. I think it's sad, but I think this uh, ultimately will save her life. And I think if she takes it seriously, which she should, not just the prison uh, uh, term, but the, the 60 mm -hmm. days following the prison mm -hmm. term, um, she needs to take her therapy very seriously. She what? needs to take responsibility for her own actions. Cindy, wouldn't you advise her to on her nails when she's appearing I would fire the judge. her. I would fire her manicurist. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what she was thinking, but the manicurist needs to be fired. The manicurist just about does what the girl she tells her to do. Is what, a message. Uh, what about also, I mean, she did the nails, right? Yeah. She released a pre-prison song, Too Young to Die. She actually that's just... That's a cry for help. Right. You know, that's a cry for help. But I think also everyone... just narcissism? I mean, this is, again, the narcissistic culture we live in. I mean, she, she, someone's around her saying that this is... They're not... So no, she doesn't have a friend. They're, but they're enablers. They're enablers. Yes. She didn't right. have the parents... She didn't have a real friend. She didn't have either. the parents. She it's didn't have the parents to say... Don't do this. Don't do that. Well, what do you and think I, about her parents, Dina well, and, her, think, and her father? Look, I think it's <laughs> sad that... I, I, I mean, that's a whole other topic, but I think it's... Um, I think it's sad that, you know, private family laundry gets aired publicly. And That's someone once said to me, children don't, raise, children don't raise themselves. themselves. Right. And she started really early. She's really talented. And sadly, I think she raised herself and didn't have the help to do it. Uh, Bidding is up right now. I think it's up upwards of $500,000 for, for a pre-prison and post-prison interview. Right. Is that something Lindsay should do? No, because, absolutely not. No. No. First of all, I don't believe Why? in checkbook journalism. That's number one. Okay. And I think you do uh, an interview for a reason. I think you do an interview when you've got something strong and powerful to say, only if you've really come uh, uh, to full so, so. term she, we've had and, her accepted, here. and accepted responsibility. Okay. She's not accepted responsibility. And that's okay. why I said, go, go. Now, so now I want to yes, keep go, moving on. Go, okay, go. now we're on to LeBron, who's the king. Now, yeah. he made a decision to go to Miami. Yeah. Uh, everybody, He was the king, but it seems like everybody is furious with him for this decision. Right. So what do you think about this? I think it was the way it was which, in which it was handled. He was uh, born and raised in Ohio, and he's had enormous fans there. I think had his announcement been handled um, uh, sort of without the hoopla that it was, had he spoken to the coach uh, and the owner of the Cavs beforehand, and Cleveland takes their sports fans very seriously, uh, had he told the coach ahead of time, look at, I'm not, I'm not going to stay. Get, no, what, no, 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 let me finish. Uh -huh. uh, uh, had he done that announcement in Cleveland at the Boys and Girls Club and said, look at, Cleveland has been great to me. I love this city. I love this state. Uh, I've taken it as far as I can take it. And, it and, it's, and, it, and, and I want to go to Miami. And I think everyone would have said, okay. You know, so that's what can he do? Yeah. What advice him not to do that? I have no idea. But then what, no can idea. He, what can he do to get his fans back then, since he didn't you know, do it that you, way? You know, when you're in the sports business, and, you know, the last time I was here we talked about Tiger, um, you know, you, you want to build fans. You don't want to alienate fans. Thank and... you, Cindy. Thank you so much for coming okay. by and giving us the, the Thank inside. You. Our thanks to Cindy Berger. We're going to be right back. Laura Ingram's kicking off a 20-city tour starting tomorrow in Hartford. Everybody in the audience taking the book home with you. The Obama Dines. Have a great day. Take a little time to enjoy the view.